I am Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Today's topic will, um, will be uh, another problem in the area of equations. Um, as I have explained before, the purpose of all these lectures is not just to give you some formulas and you can apply them in real practical situations, but to uh, um, put something in front of you which will force you to think about certain problems in certain non-trivial ways. So, um, I'm trying to come up with problems which will really encourage you to think about these things non-trivially. Um, okay, so today's equation will be, and that's the problem number four, uh, x to the fourth plus, oh sorry, that's too much, x to the third plus x squared plus x plus 1 equals to 0. Okay, now this is a cubic equation, the uh, equation of power of 3. And um, there is no simple formula to generally solve this particular equation just for any kind of coefficients um, uh, with uh, x cubed x squared, x and y. So, I'm not asking you to just solve any cubical equation. I'm asking to solve this particular one. And considering nobody actually taught you and uh, um, uh, about how to solve generally uh, all the cubical equations, so this particular equation should have certain specifics which you have to recognize and use to, uh, to solve the equation. And that's exactly what I'm asking you to do right now. Think about this, look at some specifics which might really help you to solve this particular equation, and um, after you find them, use these things to simplify it and finally come up with a solution. And this is obviously a good um, time to press the pause button, think about this particular equation, and I will continue, meanwhile, um, to basically explain how to do it. Well, let me just start with one particular um, way to solve this equation. I'm just uh, looking at this and I recognize that if I will... Oh, why not one more thing before I start it. Any equation should have the domain where I'm looking the solutions for. So, in this particular case, you know, the typical domains are real numbers and complex numbers. So I'll try to basically approach both. All right, so let's start. Now, just looking at this equation, I can recognize the fact that if I will factor out x squared from these two guys, I will get this. Right? x squared times x is x cubed. x squared plus one, uh, times 1 is x squared. And this also x plus 1. Well, obviously, the next step would be to factor out x plus 1. And I will have x squared plus 1. x squared plus 1 equals to 0. <coughs> now, obviously, if you have the product of two um, expressions which contain unknown x is equal to zero, then obviously one solution is when this equation is equal to zero, uh, I mean this expression is equal to zero, and another solution is when this is equal to zero. So we have already, from one particular equation, we have two different equations, x plus one equals to zero, and x squared plus one equals to zero. Any, any solution to this equation will be solution to this one, and any equation of this, any solution to this equation will be a solution of this one. Because if this particular uh, expression is zero, then the whole product is zero, and same with this one. All right. Next step, obviously, is just listing the solutions. This is one solution, and this is good in both, domains in all real numbers and in all complex numbers, because it's real. 
Now, as far as this is concerned, obviously x squared equals to minus 1 has no real solutions, but it has solutions among the complex numbers. And these are x equals to i and x equals to minus i. So these two are additional solutions in the domain of complex numbers. So among real numbers, we have one solution only to this original equation. And among complex numbers, we have three solutions. This one plus two additional, plus minus i. Well, just out of curiosity, um, let's uh, make a, let, let, let's check uh, these solutions. By the way, all these transformations are invariant, which means we have not gained anything, we have not lost anything. So exactly three solutions in the area of complex numbers, any equation of the power of three should have, and we have it. All right, so we wanted to check. Uh, let, let's just check one of them, the most difficult one, if, if, if you wish, x equals to minus i. All right, um, let's do it this way. Minus i to the third degree plus minus i squared plus minus i plus 1 equals to 0. All right. Now, minus i to the third degree is minus 1 to the third and i to the third, right? Because i minus i is minus 1 times i, so i is separate and minus 1 is separate. Now, minus 1 to the third degree power of 3 gives you minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1, which is minus. And i cubed is actually i squared times i. Now, i squared, as we know, is minus 1. This minus and this minus and this i will give us just plain i. Now, i square or minus i square is minus 1. So this is minus 1. This is minus i, and this is plus 1. And as you see, this is reducible, and this is reducible, equals to 0. So solution is correct, which I actually never doubted, because we had all the transformations invariant in this particular case. So that's good. Now, that's one way of solving this particular equation. And let's just go back to original way of doing this. If you remember, we looked at this equation, and we just it just come up to us that if you will um, factor out x squared, you will get x plus 1, and this x plus 1, so you can factor x plus 1 again. Now, there are different solutions to, to any equation. So this particular one has yet another solution which I would like to present to you, which also is, a, if you wish, some kind of a trick. Anything which requires some idea, like in this particular case, factor out x squared and then factor out x plus 1. Um, anything non-standard requires some kind of idea. Because the standard ones, you just use the formula and that's it. But that's not what we're talking about in this particular case. We're talking about certain non-trivial solutions uh, in case there are no trivial. Basically, there is no trivial solution to this equation. So we need to find out something special, some trick. OK, so one trick was uh, factoring out x squared and x plus 1. Here is another trick. Let's multiply this equation by x minus 1. Well, if I multiply x minus 1 to the right part, obviously, 0 will remain 0. Now, first of all, you have to understand that this is not an invariant transformation because I'm multiplying something which contains an unknown. So if I'm multiplying by something which contains unknown, if that particular something is equal to 0, then I'm basically breaking the rules of invariant transformations. 
We know that invariant transformation is when both sides of the equation can be multiplied by a non-zero factor. In this case, I don't know what I'm multiplying by. So first of all, I have to say when I'm multiplying by x minus 1 that x equals to 1 might not. Well, actually, <coughs> let's express it differently. X should not be equal to minus 1 when I'm multiplying by x minus 1. Uh, sorry, 1, not minus 1. So, this is a condition. But, my question is, my original question is, yes, I'm excluding x equals to 1 from the solutions of the original equation because I'm multiplying by x minus 1, which is supposed to be not equal to 0. Question is, if I will put this condition, will I lose anything <coughs> among solutions? Well, let's just check. Is 1 a solution? No, because 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. So 1 is not a solution. So this particular uh, condition, which I'm imposing right now, doesn't really reduce the uh, set of solutions which we have. We just checked it. It's not a solution. And now, even if after I will... Uh, solve this equation if, if, if I will get uh, the solution x equals, x equals to, to 1. I should really not use it. I should disregard it. Okay, so that's how I deal with non-invariant transformation. First, I exclude the case when it's equal to 0, when the whole expression is equal to 0, which means x equals to 1. And while I am excluding this, I'm checking that one is not really a solution, so I'm not losing anything, and everything is great. Now I can consider the resulting equation in the area of x not equal to 1. All right. Now, why did they multiply it by x minus 1? Okay, here is the one. Let's just open these parentheses. x times each one of those will be x to the fourth plus x to the third plus x to the second and x. Now, if I multiply minus 1 by these guys, I will get minus, um, minus x to the third minus x to the second minus x and minus 1. That would be when I multiply minus 1 by these guys, right? And this is equal to 0. Now, obviously, this is reduced. And what do I have as a result? I have x4 minus 1. So x4 minus 1 equals to 0. x4 is equal to 1. So this is why I have multiplied by x minus 1, to get this equation. Now you can ask, why did I complicated my life transform, tra transforming the equation of the power of 3 to the equation of the power of 4. Well, because this is much simpler, obviously. Now, how to solve this equation? This is really elementary. So, x to the fourth equals to 1. Now, very carefully, we can <coughs> extract, extract the square root from both sides. In this particular case, square root from both sides is x squared equals to 1. Now, you remember that when I'm ex extracting the square root, I have to use absolute values on both sides because I need the positive, num the positive numbers. Well, x squared is always non-negative, so I can just drop the absolute value, and 1 is non-negative as well. So from here, I get here, or here. All right? I can put it, I can drop it, doesn't really matter. Right? So, 
the square root of 1 is absolute value of 1. But let's just do it again a little more, more clearly. I did it too fast. Square root of x, uh, of x to the fourth is x squared, which is always non-negative. And this one is absolute value of 1, which means that x squared is equal to 1 is one solution, and x squared is equal to minus 1 is another solution. All right, so that's simple. We transformed our original equation to two very simple equations. Now, this is the same thing again. So x is equal to 1, and x is equal to minus 1. Two solutions. Now, this, in the area of real numbers, doesn't have any solutions. In the area of complex numbers, it's, again, something which we are familiar with. And now we have four solutions. Well, if you remember the first attempt, the first our um, um, method of solving this particular equation gave us only three solutions. It was i and minus i and minus 1. This gives us 4. But do you remember when I first multiplied the whole thing by x minus 1, I said x should not be equal to 1. So this is not a solution. Now, I'm not saying that the second method is simpler than the first one. Actually, <clears throat> maybe calculations are a little more uh, trivial in this case. However, what's less trivial is the fact that we have, we have used non-invariant transformations. And we have to basically analyze this x equals to 1 as an extraneous solution which we should really disregard. But in any case, I just wanted to present these two methods because sometimes one is working, sometimes another is working. It all depends on your taste and specific, uh, specifics of a particular task. But this is actually a very interesting example of using um, uh, the formula which simplifies lots of different things. So let's finish up with this. And let me give you a formula which basically kind of generalizes this particular equation. So if I have x to the power of n minus 1, n minus 2, this expression, if I will multiply it by x minus 1, well, it will be exactly the same thing as in the case of uh, the cubical uh, equation. So if I multiply x by any one of these guys, I will get x to the n plus x to the n minus 1 plus etc. plus x to the third, x to the square plus x. Then minus 1 minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 minus etc. minus x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 1. That's what will happen. And obviously all these will reduce and the result will be x to the n minus 1. So this is a formula which you probably just you know have to um, have as your uh, one of the methodology uh, to solve certain equations. You can use this formula in many cases. You just have to remember it probably because there is nothing, nothing more you know, interesting. Just remember that this formula actually does simplify, in some way, certain equations. Um, well, basically, that's all I wanted to talk about today, these two uh, methods to solve this particular cubical equation. And uh, thanks for your attention. And don't forget that lots of different things you can find at unizor.com. That's mathematics for teenagers. Thank you very much.